Tash the Lake and welcome to Tibet this week where we bring you weekly news edition on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration. Let's have a look at today's headlines. His Holiness the Dalai Lama condoles demise of Swami Smar Ananda Maharaj. Chinese authorities detained Tibetan singer Gejom. U.S. House resolution on Tibet condemns human rights violations in Tibet. Member of the Hamburg Parliament in Germany, Anna Elizabeth von Troenfels Frovin visits Tibetan Parliament in exile. Office of Tibet Canberra beats farewell to retiring Senator Janet Rice, welcomes new co-chair for Parliamentary Group for Tibet, Senator Barbara Pokok. Office of Tibet Taiwan participates in discourse on correlation between Buddhist philosophy and psychotherapy. Coordinator of Office of Tibet Paris attends 23rd Tibet Festival hosted by Tibet support groups in Amiens. Tibetans in Japan donate to Noto Peninsula Earthquake Relief Work. On Wednesday this week, His Holiness the Dalai Lama wrote to Ramakrishna Math and Ramakrishna Mission to express his sadness about the passing away of his spiritual elder brother, Swami Smar Ananda Maharaj. In the letter, His Holiness offered his prayer and condolences to the members of Ramakrishna Mission and his many followers. Furthermore, His Holiness wrote, the late spiritual master led a meaningful life in dedicated service to the benefit of others. According to a report released by Tibetan Center for Human Rights and Democracy, Chinese authorities has detained Tibetan singer Gejom, who is currently being held in an undisclosed location after his arbitrary detention at the hands of local police in Kyungchu County, Ngaba Tibetan, Sichuan province in the Tibetan province of Amdo. Gejom disappeared hours after the police called him to report to the county police station on the morning of 12 February, the third day of the Tibetan New Year, and he went missing the same evening. His family members later approached the county police station to inquire about his whereabouts and were told he was arrested because of the song he sang and the thinking behind it which raised concerns. Gejom is currently under Chinese police interrogation and family members were warned not to disclose any information about him to the outside world. During the Tibetan New Year last month, Gejom performed the song titled Tearful Deluge of Sorrowful Song. The song expresses the common grievances held by the Tibetans against Chinese rule and criticizes the repressive policies of the Chinese party state. Yeah, yeah, yeah. According to the center, Tibetan singers engaging in peaceful dissent are immediately labeled by authorities as threat to national security or social stability. The vaguely defined articles in the revised national security law further aid the authorities in justifying enforced disappearances of singers, writers, poets and intellectuals in Tibet. In a show of bipartisan solidarity, United States Representative James P. McGowan and Young Kim introduced a significant resolution in the House of Representatives on the 65th Tibetan Uprising Day on March 10, reaffirming support for the Tibetan people amidst ongoing human rights violations perpetrated by the Chinese government in Tibet. The resolution 1072 acknowledges the enduring struggle of the Tibetan people and recognizes the 65th anniversary of His Holiness the 14 Dalai Lama's flight from Tibet due to China's military aggression. It reaffirms support for Tibetan self-determination and condemns the systematic erasure of distinct religious, cultural, linguistic and historical identity of Tibetan people by the People's Republic of China through colonial policy of mandatory state-run boarding schools, mass relocations of Tibetan nomads and state interference in religious practices of the Tibetan people. 
The resolution strongly condemns the construction of a hydropower dam in Delhi, Eastern Tibet, and mass arrest and detention of over 1,000 Tibetans who protested against the dam construction project. The resolution demands the immediate release of all the prisoners of conscience in China, including those Tibetans detained in Delegate dam protests and calls on the Biden administration to pressure China to halt the dam project in Delegate Tibet. Sikyong Pempa Sring expressed his appreciation to the representative Jim McGovern and representative Kim Young for spearheading this resolution marking the 65th Tibetan Uprising Day in support of Tibetan people's resistance against China's oppression. On Tuesday this week, Deputy Speaker Thomas Rinte Kang convened a meeting with Anna Elizabeth von Treufels Frowin, member of Hamburg Parliament, Germany, accompanied by her husband and two staff members from the Frederick Norman Foundation based in Delhi. The visiting guests were briefed on the evolution, functioning and composition of the Tibetan Parliament in exile. During their meeting with the Deputy Speaker, they were briefed on the critical situation inside Tibet under the Chinese occupation and briefed on the mass arrest of over 1,000 Tibetan people in Kam Derge for peacefully protesting against the dam construction over the Dichu River, which would relocate villages and monasteries. The visiting guests observed the proceedings of the ongoing session where they were accorded a warm welcome by the House. Robert Froche, and then Leje de Tanda Kelvin Nezenche, and then Azu de Tenzin Panjur de Pede Tanda Pevandi, so my cousin or not shy. Ms. Anna Elizabeth von Tornfels Frovin has been a member of the Hamburg State Parliament since 2017 and a member of the Federal Executive Board of the Free Democratic Party since 2018. On Wednesday this week, the Australian All-Party Parliamentary Group for Tibet held a special event to brief the parliamentarians on the issue of Tibet and to facilitate Senator Janet Rice co-chair of Australian All-Party Parliamentary Group as she is retiring from the Senate in April. The event was facilitated by Australia-Tibet Council in coordination with the Tibet Information Office, Canberra. The event was attended by over 80 parliamentarians, their staffers and Tibet supporters, including Susan Templeton, MP Senator Dean Smith, Senator Janet Rice, Senator Barbara Pocock, David Smith and Sophie Scamps. In his address at the event, Representative Kama Singhi of the Office of Tibet thanked Senator Janet Rice for all her support for Tibet in the Australian Parliament and said Tibetans will forever remember her support in this most challenging time in Tibet's history. It's been an absolute delight and privilege to be the co-chair of this Parliamentary Friendships Group, to have the opportunity to visit Dharamsala and meet his holiness the Dalai Lama last year and to be advocating for the people of Tibet. Because for me, you know, if you see the oppression and persecution of people anywhere in the world, it's our responsibility and people who have got the ability to speak up to speak up. And so I've been really proud to be able to do that in the parliament. Representative Kama Singhi also welcomed Senator Barbara Pocock, the new co-chair of the Australian All-Party Parliamentary Group for Tibet from the Australian Greens, who will replace Senator Janet Rice. Kalu Nunziroma of the Department of Information and International Relations of Central Tibetan Administration sent a written message to Senator Rice extending gratitude for Senator Rice for being a staunch advocate for the Tibetan people. Kalun praised Senator for speaking truth to power despite formidable challenges and said it is a testament to her integrity and courage as a leader and her ability to build coalitions and bridge divides in pursuit of common goals of humanity is a model of effective governance that serves as an aspiration to all. Office of Tibet in Taiwan participated in a seminar analyzing the correlation between Tibetan Buddhism and psychology on 16 March that was organized by Kesang Mind Counseling Center. Representative Kesa Genzibawa of the Office of Tibet, Taiwan, and former president of the Taiwan Psychoanalytic Association, Wang Hoi, delivered inaugural speeches at the opening ceremony of the discourse that Geshe Tenzin Namdu Rinpoche, a Buddhist philosophy teacher from the Office of Tibet and consulting psychologist Chen Jilan, 
director of Kelsa Mind Counseling, chaired the conference. The organizers also made a special effort to promote the Blue Book to draw support for the Tibetan Freedom Movement and endorse Snow Line publication books during the event. This was the third series of discussions between Office of Tibet and Taiwan Psychoanalytic Association with the goal of encouraging His Holiness the Dalai Lama's vision of promoting Buddhist scientific and Buddhist psychology dialogues amongst the Taiwanese community. Thubtin Sering, the coordinator of Bureau de Tibet Paris, attended the 23rd Tibet Festival organized in Amiens by Tibet Support Group led by President Yolant Kamon. The festival showcased movie screening and Tibetan handicraft display. A total of 30 foreigners and 20 Tibetans were present at the gathering. The Tibet Support Group had worked for the Tibetan movement for 25 years in the region. Representative Dr. Tsawang Gibu Arya of the Liaison Office of His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Hasegawa Nako of the Tibet House visited the Japan Red Cross office in Shinjuku and handed over some of yen, 2 lakh and 28,000 as donations from the Tibetans in Tokyo and neighboring prefectures for relief work in earthquake-affected Noto Peninsula in northwestern Japan. The Tibetan community in Japan organized a prayer gathering in Tokyo with Japanese and Chinese friends earlier to pray for the victims and quick recovery from the tragedy. The Noto Peninsula of Kanazawa Prefecture of northwestern Japan suffered a massive earthquake of 7.6 magnitude on January 1st, which claimed more than 240 lives and rendered many homeless. The government and the local people are doing their best to recover from the disaster. That is all the news for this week's edition of Tibet This Week. Thank you for watching Tibet TV.